Welcome back Freelancers on the Field Rescue. Today we're in the storm and we're going to be going over a glass cannon build. It's also going to double as a crowd control build, but basically it's going to mostly be synergized around uh, putting a lot of damage in the steam vent and then kind of just pushing steam vent as far as we can. But uh, let's go ahead and get to the build. Starting the build, we're going to go to the blast seal and we're running with uh, Winter's Wrath. So Winter's Wrath, um, it, it, so most of your ice effect or ice primers are usually not going to do damage, but this is one of the few that actually does pretty decent damage too. It does about 1500 damage per hit, um, and it has a very low recharge of 3, and then its radius is 6, which is pretty average. And it has an ice effect of 100, which means it's going to pretty much instantly uh, freeze and apply the ice primer to all targets that are freezes, unless they have a resistance to ice. Um, it's an upgraded ice storm, detonates a series of icy explosions on the target location, and then Smash Rock Perk is it increased storm, or it, the ice storm permanently has more charges and recharges faster. I've got about uh, two rolls of recharge, uh, 60 and 20 gives me 80, and then I've got ammo drop rate and shotgun drop rate. The focus seal, um, we are going with Steam Vent. Uh, so Steam Vent is an upgraded glacial sphere. Uh, it, its combo effect is chaining. <clears throat> and then it deals both ice and fire damage and it is a detonator uh, so it does 3500 damage which on like just looking here it doesn't look all that impressive also it has a recharge of five which is is not bad and it has a fire effect of a 20 so it potentially can actually prime an enemy with fire uh, for uh, the inscriptions I've got dual gear damage which is about 400% uh, gear damage uh, with uh, MO pickup amount of the 30% and then 25% repair drop rate so the thing about steam vent is because it does fire and ice damage it so so a lot uh, basically on, on on like the forums and discord and, and on wherever uh there's been a, a discussion about how steam vent is either not showing all of the damage that it does and you're only seeing about a quarter of what it's doing or uh, other uh speculation is that it, because it's fire and ice damage that because it's going back and forth between the two it's actually confusing the enemy's resistance and that's why it's doing so much damage in the first place so it's actually reducing their resistance overall um but nonetheless it, it still is going to do a lot of damage and we'll kind of showcase that out through the video and and this is probably the most strongest meta gear piece that the storm has currently in build 1.7 for weapons we're running with jar's wrath there's no real reason here i do have jar's wrath um it's, it's a primer, and then it's a vault caster. It uses seal technology to focus ambient electricity, and then it blasts a short-range arc, uh, lightning arc. I will be using this if I run into enemies whose shields I can't get down, but most every enemy that I'm going to run across, Steam Vent should like nullify their shield in one shot. Uh, I'm mostly running it because of the inscriptions. Uh, so I've got dual damage inscriptions of 47%, uh, and I've got some gear recharge of 20%, and then uh, weapon ammo. Retaliation of Garatus. Uh, so it, there's nothing really special about I really won't be using this weapon at all. If I do, it's by accident. Uh, but it's an upgraded trajectory, uh, so, it's a long it, so it's got long range with low rate of fire. Uh, Gambler's Wrath, which is macro Masterwork Perk. When armor declines, weapon damage increases by 400% for 10 seconds. That only applies to this weapon. Uh, so it will not apply to the build or uh, Jero's Wrath or, or anything else. I'm mostly running it because it has dual gear damage. Well, it has 30% uh, or sorry, 29% damage and then gear damage of 28%. And then it has an increased mag size, which is, is okay. And then it has 80% uh, additional armor. In Syrian Blast, you could kind of go either way with this. I personally would rather have lightning surge, mostly because lightning surge. So, so there's between lightning surge and searing blast. Is lightning surge has a masterwork perk is if you hit an enemy, you get it restores 40% shield. Where with searing blast, it's an upgraded explosive strike, hitting enemies with an explosive uh, strike, dealing high damage, sending out a fireball that seeks enemies. So this is going to send out a fireball, and it has the potential to knock enemies down, uh, like force and it'll kind of interrupt whatever they're doing and at the same time it'll be doing damage it's very similar to binary star but it just doesn't prime enemies so it's the same thing as binary star but it doesn't have the priming effect um, but i'm also mostly running this uh, because it has dual damage inscriptions of 50 percent and then it has gear recharge of 23 percent it also has ammo drop rate support seal uh, i'm running with Anthem's Grace, which is an upgraded quickening field zone of uh, power increases gear recharge rate by 20% and additionally increases gear damage by 20%. I don't think I'll be using this a whole lot. 
Um, even though it will augment my, my gear damage by 20 additional percent, uh, actually I have to be inside of it, which kind of limits my mobility. Uh, I'm mostly running it because it's got double gear recharge, or sorry, it's got gear recharge and then it's got uh, B, which is my steam vent recharge. So I should be getting about 51% gear recharge for uh, my steam vent, uh, which I'm going to need because I uh, steam vent is going to take a second to recharge. Uh, it also has a uh, pickup radius, which pickup radius on the storm, in my opinion, is probably the best thing. Uh, one of the better inscriptions because it allows you to pick up health often and from further away. And then also with that, I'm getting a uh, 20% extra repair drop rate. So I'll be dropping more. So enemies that die will drop repair rate, repair packs more often. And then I'll be able to pick them up more off or from further away as well. Components. So we're running acid slugs. As you probably already realized, I don't have a shotgun. So the acid slugs really isn't going to do anything for me. It's really the inscriptions. So I'm getting uh, a gear damage of 30% and then uh steam vent damage of 28 which is going to be a really really helpful or really push steam vent to its limits softening blows uh is going to increase javelin shield by a large amount uh it increases damage resistance by 75 percent for five seconds when shield runs out and then it has uh dual armor uh inscriptions and then i'm going to be uh pairing that with vanguard's token which increases armor by 25 percent so both these increase my armor and my shield by a decent amount and then uh, on shield break, it increases damage resistance by 40% for 10 seconds. So basically for five seconds, I'll have over 100% uh, resistance, which means I really can't be damaged at all. Um, and then it, it also has an inscription of 28% uh, alt speed, so I can get my alt back a lot quicker. And it's got weapon ammo amount. Extend, uh, extended sniper magazine. Yeah, kind of like you saw, I don't have a sniper magazine. This kind of falls in the same category as acid slugs. It's just here for the uh, inscriptions, which I have dual damage inscriptions, which give me about 45% damage. The storm components, I'm running Mark of Rune. Increases fire damage by 5% and fire effect by 5%. Uh, so steam vent should get a buff from this. And then after applying a status effect, so Winter's Wrath or even, or sorry, ice effect or applying a uh, fire effect from steam vent it'll increase fire damage by 50 percent so i'm going to essentially be getting 55 percent damage out of uh, my steam vent as long as mark of ruin is procted for about 10 seconds which that's that's a pretty good amount of time for that to be proc to be available and then it's got some shield delay so i'll get my shield back a little bit quicker and it's got uh, a little bit more uh, it's got about 25 percent repair drop rate I'm also running another uh, storm component, Token of the People. So it increases the number of combo chains by two. Uh, I'm not really too concerned. Having more combo chains is nice, but it's not a super powerful effect. However, it's magical perk hitting an enemy with uh, Winter's Wrath will increase Steam Vent damage by 60% for 10 seconds. So basically, with these two, I'm going to be getting what? If I can keep both Token of the People and Mark of Rune up. I'll be getting 115% extra damage for about 10 seconds. Uh, so that, that's just going to add more to the whole glass cannon build. Um, and then it has 45% re resupply drop rate, which is going to be really good because that means little enemies will be dropping uh, repair packs more often as well. With that additional bonus, though, I have 50% 50, 50 increased uh, pickup radius. These should not be hard for me to get. And then it's got marksman ammo rifle, which, which I should not be using at all. So the idea with this build is if I'm going to go in... I'm going to use uh, Winter's Wrath to basically freeze a group of enemies, which will proc Token of the Pupil uh, and Mark of Ruin, which will give me that like extra 115% damage to Steam Vent. And then I will should be able to just one-shot almost every single enemy type with Steam Vent alone. And then I can just rinse and repeat, freeze a group of enemies, deal with one, refreeze a group of enemies, uh, take down one. And then these two should stay up for a majority of the time. And then every once in a while, whenever I need health or something, I'll just uh, melee out of the air and use Searing Blast to throw out a, uh, a fireball to kind of like bounce around between the enemy types to like stagger them or kind of just do a little extra damage while at the same time I should be picking up health packs. So realistically, it should be really hard for me to be killed. Also with Softening Blows and Vanguard's token is like my insurance to keep me from going down instantly. We're going to launch a legendary mission. We're going to be in GM3. And then for transparency, we're bringing an epic, rare, and uncommon gear sigil, which will give me about 60% gear recharge. Let's go. With the scorpions, what we'll do is we'll freeze a group. And then because there's so many of them, they're so close, we should be able to chain a bunch together just over and over and over. And then I'll just kind of rinse and repeat by taking them down with storm vent, freezing a group, taking them down by storm vent. Uh, it should make really easy work out of them. And I'll use uh, searing blast in between to just 
proc or, or, sh or shoot around that fireball just to go around smacking them and getting a little extra damage. We got some legendary brutes. Granted, they're not super, super hard to deal with, but I'm still able to one-shot them with the steam vent, uh, even though they are legendary. And there goes the fireball for the searing blast. And I would only really use Searing Blast whenever uh, you've already primed an enemy type. Because um, you just get more value out of it. And now I can just freeze that uh, group of brutes over there so I can deal with the uh, hounds. Alright, let's see what kind of damage we can do. Uh, took down the shell and did a little bit of damage. Froze them so they should fall out of the air. There they are. And we didn't quite one-shot them. But we did quite a bit of damage and we were able to immobilize them for a moment. All right, we'll try and take down uh, the storm. Almost one shot. Uh oh, there's a fury behind me. <laughs> so I will try and take cover and try to pop out of cover, you know, kind of like a glass cannon and uh, take out these enemies one by one. I just have to be mindful of the fury so it doesn't sneak up on me because it, it can take me down sort of quickly as I'm not super tanky. So if I had a little bit more damage in my steam vent, I bet you I could take down all these storms or these Valkyries in one shot. Oh, there he is. I got to go. <laughs> oh, yep. It's like I thought they were going to get it behind me. But now I, I, I'm back to cover and I'm just kind of slowly whittling away the crowd, which is kind of the intent of this build. Okay, I can see that fury right there. Got to dodge out of the way. Okay, sweet. And then I can just sit back here and take out these brutes one by one and the shock troopers. And as long as I keep a good spacing between me and... The Fury, I should be alright. Alright, let's take out the Fury, but we're going to have to do it a little bit cautiously. <laughs> oh, there. Almost one shot. Like I said, if I would have had a bit more damage in my Steam Vent, um, I would have taken them down pretty uh, pretty easily. And now i got to deal with their Invincible Shield. Okay, now they dropped it, I should be able to take them down. One more Steam Vent should do it. Yep, nice. Okay, there's like half a dozen turrets and a couple storms over here, but I'm going to show you the easy way to take them all out. So I'll pretty much freeze all of them, and then I will literally take one out at a time, because that's all I have to deal with. I can just freeze them over and over and over, because uh, I have enough charges, and then deal with them one by one. Like, typically flying, flying through here could be a pain in the butt if you don't have an alt ready. Which I have an alt, but I, I don't need to use it. Oh, I don't know how I missed that. Making, uh, making easy work of these storms. Apparently this Wither wants to get in on the action too. All right, just gotta line up the shot and boom. We're gonna launch a uh, quick play stronghold and GM3. And then for transparency, we're bringing uh, epic, rare, and uncommon gear sigil, which will give me about 60% gear recharge. Let's go. So I like to go around and uh, take out all the turrets as fast as possible. And this build really helps you do that because you can go around uh, on the outside and take them all down really quickly and freeze one while you're damaging the other one. And then right here I'll do the same thing. I'll just freeze both turrets and then take down one at a time. And with Steam Vent I want to focus on their weak points to do the most damage. So I'm going to use Searing Blast to get a fireball out to kind of like bounce between the turret and uh, the sniper up top, which will help a lot with the crowd control, at least in this area. Alright, this is going to be a good example of where uh, Winter Draft is very viable. So basically I'm going to freeze this entire group and then focus on the shielded enemies. And that way I, I'm only really dealing with a couple enemies at a time. Yeah, like all those enemies over there were pretty much frozen. And then I can just keep refreezing them and then focusing on the shielded enemies. And this build can have a lot of synergy with um, rangers too because I froze so many enemies that like right there just uses all take out shoots about everyone. All right, now I need to get down on the ground and get some health real quickly. And I can use Searing Blast to bounce around all the enemies. You can see the fireballs just moving around through all of them. It's doing about 7,000 damage per hit. Nothing special, but we're just using it as more of a crowd control proc than uh, actual DPS. And 
The obvious downside of this build is you're gonna be really low health really often. And if you're not comfortable with that, that's a good reason to bring uh, Lightning Surge over Searing Blast. But it's really, it, it's really dependent on your playstyle. And then even though Winter Wrath isn't really doing a lot of damage, it's still preventing these enemy types from getting their shield back. And I'm really setting this Ranger up for alt combos. So even though I can control the crowd really well, I'm I'm almost one-shotting every enemy type, at least the enemy elite enemy types, because I put so much damage into the the build, and Steam Vent on its own can actually handle quite a bit, which which makes this build really unique in the fact that I, I can freeze enemy types that I don't want to deal with, the weaker ones, and then kind of focus my my uh, DPS on the shielded or more tankier enemy types, which I can take down pretty quickly because. Steam vent, uh, especially on this build, has a lot of damage in it. Okay, let's see what kind of damage we can do against Tyrant Queen. Uh, so that's not quite 100,000, but it's, it's still not bad. Let's see what we can do again. Okay, that's definitely over 100,000 for what we can see. Um, and then you really want to be focusing on Tyrant Queen, or uh, in general on weak points, to really get the added value. And then combos are just going to do more damage. So this is a good example of crowd control where I'm freezing enemies and the other storm was using... Turtle Squall to do tick damage to the enemies. Okay, let's see if we can finish off Tyrant Queen. I'll go ahead and use my ult to show that it's, it's not completely useless. So we got about 400,000 on that one. About another 400,000. And this one is 400,000 as well. Not not great damage for ult, but it's, it's still viable. Alright, kind of reviewing the build and kind of looking at some of the pros and cons. Um, something I definitely feel like uh, you could switch out is Syrian Blast with uh, Lightning Surge. I think I've talked about it a couple times. It just would give you that extra buffer to uh, getting your shield back and, and kind of maintaining it a little bit more often. Uh, I, I preferred Syrian Blast in this build because of the way it worked for me, and, and I prefer to have that uh, s uh, the fireball kind of going out, uh, doing a little bit of extra damage, and interrupting enemy types, uh, giving me a chance to like freeze them or or just like preventing them from shooting me, which would also allow me to get my shield back. It really depends on the situation, uh, ultimately, and, and how comfortable you are with it. Steam Vent is probably the most powerful uh, gear piece. For, it is the most powerful gear piece for the Storm, possibly among all the Javelins, uh, it, just because it does so much at, at one, one instance. Uh, Winter's Wrath, uh, it, th that kind of goes more into the crowd control and, and like we kind of showed in some of the missions where I could just freeze a group of enemies and I just had, I didn't have to worry about them taking me down or really dealing with them because I could just focus on one enemy at a time, kind of allowing me to do whatever. And then those enemies would stay frozen, so if I had another javelin with me, they could t combo them or deal with them on their own without having to uh, also take damage. So it's, it's not a bad build. Um, I, I kind of would like to put more damage into Steam Vent um, or budget more damage in the Steam Vent. It's just where would I want to take it away from. Uh, I don't feel like there's too much more to be said about this build, um, but I hope to see you guys out in Bastion.